The Tower is um, the second part in a trilogy that began with a film I made um, in 2017 called Tremble Tremble. And Tremble Tremble really focused on the legacies of the European witch trials in relationship to how women experience the law today. It really looked at you know, what was happening around the transformation of um, the Eighth Amendment in Ireland at the time and looking through the work of Silvia Federici, an amazing Italian um, feminist and historian, to how that connected with the histories of the witch trials. I really just kind of started to think and track back to, well, who were the ancestors that came before the witches and that question really resonated with me and during lockdown I was reading you know Hildegard von Bingen and Marguerite Perret and really looking at um, Beganines and women who lived in in very extreme seclusion and isolation and how that really influenced their imagination. The, the tower really seeks to find the origin of this moment of female imaginary in the 12th century looking at the mystical visionary writings of von Bingen and, and Perret and Macdead of Madeberg and really just trying to explore how that moment of potential was really ruptured by the violence that followed in, in, this, in the subsequent centuries with the rise of capitalism and, and the witch trials of course famously eviscerated a lot of this, um, I guess the autonomy um, that women had um, the, the ability to, to access their own spaces of imaginary. My work is often inspired by um, thinking about women in particular that have kind of fallen out of um, popular historical memory. Um, I'm always fascinated to uncover um, somebody who might have been omissed from my own um, research to this point. So during um, lockdown, during COVID, I spent a lot of time um, researching 12th century mystics. Um, I was very drawn to them because their lives seemed so parallel to what was happening in our own lives at the time. Um, I was really interested in the history of the Beganine movement and in particular Marguerite Perret. Um, who became a big influence on this work, The Tower, and a lot of her text and a lot of her kind of forms of imaginary are really present in the artwork. And collaboration's always been really important in my work, but the thing that becomes ever more important is repeated collaborations. So this is my second collaboration with myself and Owen Fuere. And I suppose as you collaborate once, as you collaborate again, things go deeper and you have more of a shared understanding and a shared imaginary about what's possible and what really compels you. So working with Alwyn for the second time um, was incredible and working with Junk Ensemble for the first time and hopefully not for the last time was just amazing because they brought so much um, embodied understanding and intelligence around the body. So working with um, the choir of young performers who are incredible musicians, um, bringing that kind of body intelligence to performers that were so used to working vocally and had such skill vocally. So I feel like collaboration is really so necessary when you want to make a very multidisciplined project where you're bringing in specificity of skills from a lot of different places. I, I try to work as much as possible with the same team over and over again because there's just a muscle memory in collaboration that each time it's activated in a totally unique way where you're constantly learning from each other as collaborators, you know. I, I do feel that I had a lot of studio time on this project um, because I wasn't traveling and making so many projects and I really slowed down. So the first initial year was such an indulgence of reading and um, getting to read like incredible texts by like Perret and Hildegard von Bingen and Macted of Madeberg and really getting to delve into the time and energy into reading in such a disciplined way during lockdown. What I really realised during that period of time is the value of having a studio and making small models and you know rehearsing what's going to happen um, when you're in the room with your collaborators by waiting in isolation for that moment for so long. It meant by the time I got to the film shoot and by the time I got to rehearsals with performers, 
I was just so excited to be in the room with other people. Um, so I guess the process is very um, slow and I make artworks very slowly. I make artworks in a way where they one experience builds on top of another experience and by the time I get to the end of the road with the work, you know, I even am surprised myself that it that's how it came true. But you know, it's I guess for working in, in art, um, the most important thing for me has been able to trust the not knowing to trust that, you know, the cloud of unknowing, that something is appearing through the mist. I think trust and risk are hand in hand. As much as I trust the process of making art, the only value in trusting something is risking everything. So it's always a risk. It's always a risk that, you know, it might go too deep or too far for it to even, for yourself to pull yourself back from. But that's the risk of making artworks, you know, it's, a primordial goo. One of the, the most compelling reasons why I looked at 12th century mystics during that period um, was it's very connected to why I want to be an artist, why I care about art. And it took me a long time to realize that, like, for me, art is also a very mystical experience. It's about bringing something to the surface that is unknown and is unknown to the self. So for me, it comes a lot from my own unconscious experiences, but then also having this incredible privilege to work in collaboration with other people. There's this potential in collaborating in the space of the unconscious with others is such an incredibly vibrant and uh, rare thing to get to do. There's not a lot of types of work that allow for that. Um, so I'm, re I'm really, um, a big advocate for the role of art and the role of art within society. I'm also a teacher and um, I teach on Shirkin Island which I absolutely adore and the process of teaching and the process of being an artist are very knit together for me as well. It's about a kind of sharing and, and bringing something into being um, that otherwise might not be.